you track this bike right here. You see me right there. That's a good thing about having just a regular throttle on a bike is when you get in tight situations, you can just give yourself a little bit of throttle to kind of spin around or get uphill or whatever you need to do to start pedaling. <laughs> oh, that's steep. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Ad Motor Fat Tire Bike Review. Now, this is an electric bike. So we're going to put this thing through the paces. I'm going to unbox it with you, put it all together like I usually do, and then go out in the wilderness. Since this is kind of a all-terrain fat tire bike, I'm going to be able to get out in the trails, do some road riding, just see how it kind of performs in general. I'll do a pros and cons at the end like I usually do. Usually put a drone up in the air. And so all you drone fans, you'll have a little drone adventure of um, tracking this. The first thing I'm gonna unbox is just this little accessory box here. So let's just do that really quick. So I usually tell these guys, you know, send me as many accessories as you can with the bike so I can kind of review the stuff you're selling. And some of them like, no, we're just gonna send you the bike. And some of them actually will send some pretty cool accessories. Phone holder that you can put in this plastic and you can still touch it through this plastic. And then uh, this looks like just a little loop around the bike kind of bag. You can like loop around the neck or the frame somewhere. This is Velcro here. And you can just attach the Velcro there, a bag on your left and right. And then you have your phone right here with a little bag in itself. That's pretty cool, what a great accessory. And then let's see what this one is here. Okay, extra mirrors. So usually, you know, mountain bikes, e-bikes don't come with mirrors. If you're doing the city kind of biking and stuff, I like that carbon fiber effect there, that's neat. Plastic with a carbon fiber. But anyway, I wanna get to the bike, right? You're gonna need a set of scissors too. Hopefully they give us a bunch of tools to put it together. Some of the bikes I've recently done, you know, they're kind of lacking in little cheap tools that would put everything together. But I just want to kind of get it loose in here. And then I'm going to flip the box over and pull the bike out. I got to rip these sides off because they just keep closing on me. There we go. Box off. Of course, it's always easier if you have somebody helping you, but I don't have anybody helping me today. So. If you don't have anybody helping you guys, here's how you do it. Get this box out of the way. Very good scissors. This thing has more tie wraps than normal. Okay, this is actually, this is the whole rack. See this thing? That is a pretty darn beefy rack. So that's gonna go right behind the rear tire if you wanna put that on. If you have something to strap down your supplies with. Zip tie with foam right around the screen. It's like box of tools and accessories. Yep, toolbox right there. Just a load of tie wraps. I guess that keeps it in the box though, huh? So there's the fat tire, guys. Check this thing out. Pretty neat, huh? Kenda, nice. Kenda's a good brand. 26 by 4.0 tire. Wow, is this a met aluminum fender? Interesting. Usually they're plastic. That's an aluminum fender, cool. So let's get all these off. You know, like the axle nuts, just to protect it so it doesn't scuff up the box. Here we go. Ooh, I almost cut that wire. That's not a zip tie. There we go. There is the headlight. Looks like a pretty bright LED. I love unboxing these things. I love seeing the different designs. It's so cool. This one looks like a red and black and white. I could have went for a different color, but that's okay. This is the sample they had to send to me. So I ain't complaining. Rear fender's already mounted. Same aluminum, you hear that? Bing! Controller back here for the electronics. There's the battery. Looks like it's fully charged and it's been sitting for a while. Battery charge plug right there. 
Here's a little key with the zip tie. I'm gonna cut that off right now. This is a front suspension only model. I do have some bikes I'm reviewing guys that are also have rear and front suspension. Motan M560P7. That's the model we're reviewing today. And I think that's just about it on all of the zip ties. There's the steering stem here. Man, that is a thick frame. I mean, look at this thing. It's just like a square, thick freaking frame. Just some plastic over the chain guard there, the chain shifter guard, just so it's not rubbing on the box. Nice, and this is one of those bikes where you can do pedal assist or, look at that, you have straight throttle. This is cable brakes. Front and rear, whoops, I shouldn't have done, I always do that. I should not have done the front. <laughs> because it didn't feel like it had a spacer in there. This is the only other box that was in here. Box that's gonna have the charger and the tools. Charger, boom, bam, boom. Shing! There we go, ST lithium ion battery charger. And a wall plug. This one's actually a one way, it has a flat end and a round end, so that can only go in one way. And then got my plug into the wall. Add motor M560. And here's the instruction manual. Shows you how to put on everything, how to crank down, put the wheel on, put the handlebars, get them all straight, how to do the seat, how to do the pedals, super easy, and how to charge it. Starting the bike and what all the digital display does. So we'll get all to all that in just a sec. We got uh, two pedals right here. Wellgo pedals, tool bag, and a brake light. So it has a little plastic piece of plastic in here that you pull out. So, you know, not your most advanced brake light. It's just like part of the lens right here. Do you see that little switch in there? So you gotta like kind of push the lens kind of hard down here. So brake light. Brake light flashing off. I do like to see them with their own designated wired brake light. Tool bag, let's check this out real quick. We got a Allen wrench T with three different sizes. Opener end wrench or two, 13, 15, 10, and eight. We have a screwdriver handle with a universal screwdriver with Phillips and flat. And the only other things we got Looks like they might have all the tools in here you need. A smaller Allen wrench, a very large Allen wrench, two longer smaller Allen wrenches, and a 17 and 19 open end wrench. We also got an add motor electric bike sticker. Class two is what this bike is. All right guys, now that we got everything out of the box and opened up and unpacked, let's see how it looks when everything's put together. So this is a 65 pound bike, 40 kilometers max on a full charge. A wrench to put on the pedals. That looks like the 15 millimeter. There we go. Give that a good crank. There we go, two pedals on, nice and easy. Now what I like to do is put the handlebars on before we put the tire on so we have something to kind of be out of the way and hold everything up. It looks like somebody stripped that top right one already. Using the tool kind of too hard to tighten it too fast. So we're just gonna loosen this bugger up, put our handlebars on. Those look like there's a little bit of uh, Loctite on these though, that's good. And I like how they, they have the serration on the handlebars solid, you know, that's, I've noticed some of them have manufacturing defects, but looks like they got this one covered pretty good. Um, so that handlebar's not gonna slide up and down. Be careful with this plug because these pins are gonna bend like super easy. I don't know why they just didn't plug that one in from the factory. Yeah, it just feels like, one of the pins isn't going in right. I'll deal with that a little bit later. Let's just get this thing on here. So this part looks like it may be a little bit difficult. Maybe that's why they left it unplugged because these wires, you gotta kind of get out of the way. You want it all to be even so it distributes um, the clamping force evenly and there's enough bite on each bolt. Here's the front wheel, super light. That's what's cool about these things is they're just, they're big but the rubber is pretty thin. It's not that thick. 
So you definitely don't want to go over, you know, any nails or cactus or anything like that. What I end up doing with these ones is I go ahead and I put in some of that um, tire slime. And that seems to work good. Like even if you got like a little cactus puncture, that slime will just fill it up right away. So you don't have to worry about it on the trail. Just two uh, nuts for the axle and a washer. Now that the handlebar's on there, I'm gonna flip this thing over. And then it will, you see how it'll kind of sit there by itself, hopefully, yeah, there we go. And they just kind of have this plug in here. And this is in here really tight, so we're gonna need a wrench to take this off. Just using one of the wrenches they gave us in that tool kit. Use that for something around the house. That's actually good to have around, who knows. And it looks like you wanna leave the washer in the inside and then not on the outside of the actual stem. And the washer does have these little indentions in it and the indentions were actually facing out. There's the brake pads there. Let's see if we can squeeze it in there even if I clamp the brake. Another bike I didn't see have a plastic stopper in them. They're supposed to, but this one didn't have one for some reason. I just have to make sure the brake is in there and everything. There we go. You see how it just, it felt like I had to pull the forks apart just a little bit to get that to drop down in. Both drop, then you can tighten your axle nuts. Just make sure that wheel is all the way down in this trough so that uh, there's no question if that thing's gonna fall out. So we've got our 15 millimeter wrench. Let's give this a good crank. Not too, too tight, but we don't want it falling off in the trail, right? Through a dirt trail with this bad boy, going over some big rocks and stuff. Spinning okay. That's usually how the brakes grab it uh, when it's new. You're gonna have a little bit of brake grab. Pulling the left brake right here. So I'll spin it. Pull left brake. Yeah, that's working perfectly. I really hope I wasn't supposed to put the fender on before the tire. <laughs> Let's figure that out right now. Get this thing turned back around. Now I can put the kickstand down. And there's my back. And usually with mud guards, guys, the short part is gonna go out front because the wheel rolls this way and all that mud's gonna be splattering on here. Otherwise, it'll go on the bike and you, so. All right, well, I guess we got to figure out how to put the fender on ourselves as usual. There was nothing about the rack in here. So these bike companies, I mean, they're, you know, the bikes are affordable, but there's always something missing. I don't know why they put this nut on here. This is weird. It's usually going to be something like this. The light goes on the outside. I think the reason why they put that bolt in there or that nut that's too big was just for a spacer. An oversized nut is the spacer. Light bracket, fender bracket on one side. Your bolt goes through, and then your bolt comes out, then you put that spacer nut in between the frame and the fender bracket. And then I just have a washer and the nut on the other side. Everything's sandwiched right in there. And we got a 10 millimeter that does fit right on here. And the large end of the Allen wrench handle. So that's great, you know. They gave us the right tools for the job to at least get everything together. Crank this down really tight. There we go. Okay, you see how the light works? So you can adjust it here. The light also has a Phillips and a nut in the back right here. So you can tighten that down so it's not so loose. Too much. Wow, and what a great screwdriver. Well, cheap tool, but the screwdriver tip just broke. So, you know, that's how it is with some of these cheap tools. But I think that's pretty much it. I was able to tighten it really tight. Let's go ahead and put on this rack, guys. Rear fender here is a little bit, if I just look at it straight on, it's a little bit to the right. So probably just gonna have to bend these things around just a little bit to make them all even. Otherwise that mud's gonna get past that fender and splatter all over you. Seat seems nice and soft, a little bit larger and softer than the normal seats I see, so that's cool. So it looks like just four Allen screws that you gotta take out. If you do have some blue thread lock, you might wanna put it on these ones because this is kind of metal to metal. Just this stuff right here, this Loctite blue thread lock, just put like a dot. Put the rack where it's supposed to be lined up and then of course all you're doing is putting the 
bolts right back where they were. I do notice that sometimes these frames come kind of like tweaked, not really square. So sometimes you gotta like get one in and just get, make sure the threads are in a little bit and then kind of tweak it a little to match the next one. Yeah, so this is what I was saying. Like I got the last one here and I'm really having to kind of bend this one down. All right. That rack is on there solid, nice and tight. It's square, not scraping anything. Let's see how this goes. So see how that is? Yeah, so it has a little bit of a tapered rubber thing in here, a little rubber shim. And they kind of taper it so it can go up and be more uh, perpendicular to the road, more upright. So you just grab this strap, pull it around, and there you go. Super simple tail light. Let's push in the top and turn it off and on. That should last a long time. Something I did not see, guys, check it out. It looks like a kind of spring dampener in the seat. It's just like these big old rubber dampeners. There might be a spring in there, but that might be, make it a little bit more comfortable, at least since there's no rear suspension. You have a little bit of a dampener on for your butt. So it actually has one of the better bells I've seen. Some of them are just like this spring that is like a hammer. This is great because it actually is a clicking mechanism. Shifter, seven speed. This does come on a lot of them. I'm gonna take off this little screen protector on our digital readout here. And there's actually also a little protector on the shifter. Here is our speed adjust. Looks like power here. There is a little USB port right down here in the bottom. So if you wanted to charge your phone or whatever, you can. And speaking of the phone, the last thing I want to install, a little bag and phone bracket. So this thing looks pretty cool. So you see what I'm doing here? The short one is the one that's going to go in the front. And then the long one goes in the back. It looks like this looks like this is the way it goes. There we go. But see how that works? That's pretty cool. So I'm going to work on kind of getting this thing plugged in. I'm gonna to have to get a little a plastic pick or something and separate those. So I'll go ahead and work on that guys. Get outside and let's take this thing for a spin. Okay guys, so just had the battery charged up. Um, it really was pretty much fully charged when it came um, in the box. So I just plugged it in, remember that port right here into the wall for about 20 minutes and the light went green. So I think this thing is ready to go. And I'm not sure if I showed this in the unboxing, but here's the battery. It's super easy to put in and out. We'll just go through that real quick before we start riding. Pop the bottom in. Once you have the bottom in, you just push the top and it clips in just like that. And you have to have the key to open it and pull the battery out. As you can see, the battery will not come out until you put the key in, turn the key while you pull that lever. So super simple. I don't think you have to have the key in uh, when you are putting the battery in. Let's see that real quick. If I take the key out, yeah, so the key only has to go in there when you're, when you're popping the, the battery out. And by the way, there's like no battery specs on the battery. So if you guys are interested in the battery specs on this battery, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen right here before we take our ride. To track this ride today for you drone guys, I'm using the Mini 3 Pro. Great little super light drone. I actually crashed it in my last bike review. Just replaced a couple of propellers and it's working fine. This is the version that has the um, controller with a screen on it. So remember that phone case right here? I just basically zip tied the controller to the phone case. Yeah, I think that's gonna stay on there pretty good. One more thing guys, I just basically rode down the driveway to make, every, make sure everything was working. And it seems like the gears were not shifting. So if you look over here at the Shimano shifter guard, it's actually bent. I don't know if that's from shipping or what, but I think this guard right here, it bent over and it's pushing the Shimano shifter into like the tire, the chains, like touching the tire and everything. I didn't catch that when we were putting it together. So I'm just going to kind of attempt really quick to bend, to pry this out here there we go so i just kind of want to pry everything out just a little bit you know what i mean just a tad not too much so it's not touching the tire there that looks good let's boot this sucker up and go for a ride so the m turns it on and then you have 
A quick press on the M button is your odometer and your trip. If you press and hold the up arrow here, you'll see here how average speed kicked in. You press and hold the up arrow again, and it tells you your max speed. And you press it again, and it just takes you back to your real-time speed, okay? By the way, guys, I'm reviewing this um, Scotty Vest 2. This thing has like so many pockets like everywhere. So if you're interested in like a jacket that has unbelievable amount of pockets, especially for drones and stuff, I'd recommend maybe taking a look at the Scotty Vest new line of jackets. But that's what I'm wearing today. And man, that mini just fits in any pocket you want. You want to put it in and it's nice and warm. I think it's probably about 45 degrees out right now. This thing's keeping me warm. Active track, go. All right. Get that kickstand up. I'm really hoping that this thing can track me and this bike is gonna shift now that we kind of bent that thing out. We are going to go, guys, in the dirt and the trails. But initially, I just kind of want to see how it is on the road, you know what I mean? I always like to do road stuff at first, see how the power is, how fast it can go, the battery and all that stuff. And then we will go um, in the dirt trails for a little bit, okay? Brakes are feeling good, stopping me A-OK. -okay. It's kind of like the other bike I reviewed, the Himaway where it kind of comes on a second after you're pedaling and it goes off a second after you stop pedaling. So it's not really dynamic, you know what I mean? It just kind of comes on full blast. So that's something you might need to know. Remember if you want the power assist throttle only, which I have on now, I'm just pulling this throttle and it's zooming, wow, okay. That sucker goes. You just like want to ride it like a motorcycle. And then remember, you can pre press this button and it disables this throttle here, so you don't have to worry about that. So the Mini 3, guys, if you're wondering about drones, this is kind of as far away as you can go for tracking. It's quite close. And uh, it can't really track you backwards. You see how it's having problems? <laughs> it, it kind of wants to always uh, get behind you. So we'll just go ahead and let it get behind us here. My Skydio is in disrepair. Um, after the update, it doesn't work anymore. So I'm kind of bummed about that. I didn't even fill up these tires and they feel like they're pretty plush. I'm gonna try to see if I can get my on-bike camera and show you how the suspension is here when I'm slamming it on really hard. See if you can see that shock work. See that? So that's the suspension. And I forgot to mention too, it does have um, rebound dampening adjustments. And you can also just lock the shocks off if you want it down here on the top of the shocks. They're just little clickers. Anyway, we'll ride down the road here. We'll just kind of go around the loop and uh, we'll get a feel. No rear suspension, remember? If you kind of sit on the back of the seat, it kind of does give you a little bit of suspension. I mean, like I was saying, the tires in general are pretty plush, so it's gonna feel fine. Brakes feel good. Let me slam on the, real, the rear brake all the way. Yep, and you hear, you hear that tire just skid? Let's see if maybe we can get that on the on-bike cam. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's the rear tire skidding. So brakes are no problem, even though they're, ca they're cable brakes. I'm gonna switch into power assist one, and we're gonna go up in the gear shifting. Yeah, it seems like it's working fine now, guys. The gear shift is working. Now that I bent that thing a little bit. So let's go power assist two. Power assist one was kind of bogging there. Power assist two seems fine. Let's go power assist three. Yeah, so that kicks in immediately. Let's see if the brakes shut it off. Yep. So the brakes, if you brake 
it'll immediately shut off the power, okay? But if you just let your legs kind of stop, oops, I think the drone just lost me. Come on, drone. Can't you track me? Buddy, you track this bike right here. You see me right there. That's a good thing about having just a regular throttle on a bike is when you get in tight situations, you can just give yourself a little bit of throttle to kind of spin around or get uphill or whatever you need to do to start pedaling. So these electric bikes are pretty darn cool, man. But like I was saying, just a little bit of lag on the off and, off and on, kind of like the Himuway I just reviewed a, a bit ago, maybe a couple months back. You can see the display here, hopefully in my hat cam. It shows you the wattage when you start pedaling. It shows you your miles per hour. Looks like we're doing good. And of course, it just kind of shows you um, what power assist you're in and your battery power. So far, so good. I mean, I wouldn't have thought it would, it would be any worse than this. A little bit bummed about that damage in the in the shipping with the, you know, the rear shifter, Shimano shifter, but it wasn't really damaged. It was just kind of bent. But so it seems to have fixed it, just a little, little bending back. But yeah, I mean, it feels good. What can I say? Let's do a little bit of swerving here. Feel how the bike kind of responds. I'm just kind of tapping the brake once in a while. Let's see if this drone can keep up with us. So the handlebars are like a little short. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're like these little tiny stubby handlebars. So this doesn't feel like you got really the super luxury arm position or hand position. It's almost like I might want to twist these handlebars back a little because the way these handlebars are, they have this bump here and the bump is like digging right into my Palm. We'll come around the bend here and then we'll go up this pretty hard hill and we'll see really just how this thing can perform up pretty much like a 20 to 30 percent grade right here. Let's see how this thing does it. So I'm going to start off in power assist one and of course remember this is a seven speed so you can just be kind of popping it here. A little bit hard to go up. This is the super steep part going into Power Assist 3. Yeah, no problem up the hill. You know, if I wanted to, I could just go throttle only. Here's another hard here. This is throttle only, guys. I'm not going to be pedaling. It's starting to really bog. $9.99 on the wattage doesn't really want to pull me up the hill just barely so I'm gonna help it with a little bit of pedaling so something to keep in mind I wasn't in power assist 5 but it seems like you get the same the same kind of throttle in any power assist okay 999 watts is its max wattage so it's just a thousand watt motor so don't expect any miracles here but you know, working okay. I'm going to drop it down. Of course, the less power assist you need, the longer your battery is going to last, right? We'll just cruise around this uh, subdivision here. Hopefully the drone won't hit anything. But I'm just up, up in the mountains. I mean, I'm, I'm about 7,000 feet up here in the southwest. And it's just looking beautiful this time of year. Everybody's dogs are freaking out. <laughs> they got a bike. They got a drone to chase. <laughs> Look at this dog. He wants to squeeze through that fence somehow. All right. So far, so good, man. Give you another view of the shocks here so you can kind of see how everything's working. Hi. 
see how that drone does around the car. All right, cool. All right, so far so good with the Mini 3 Pro. I know this isn't a drone review, guys, but I like to kind of roll a few things into my videos. If you're thinking about doing tracking with a certain drone and seeing, you know, kind of how the drone was doing. <clears throat> this is a good example. So you can't really go too fast with this drone. All right, so we'll just get down the hill here, test out the brakes. Now this is just cable and padded brakes, right? Seems to be doing fine. Front brakes kind of squeaking a bit. I don't know if you guys, if you guys can hear that. Take a left here again and go up the road and see how the battery does. Yeah, so it's, it's almost like the top three is only shifting two gears. So it could be adjusted just a tad. And there's just like a little screw on the shifter that you can just tweak a little bit to adjust the shifting. Let's pick up the pace a little, make this motor work hard. I'm gonna just go non-pedal for a while. And I'm just full throttling this little inner handlebar throttle right here by my hand. I'm not sure if this drone's gonna keep up. As I have my throttle pushed all the way, I'm just tapping the front brake to slow down and holding my throttle on. And it's actually cutting the throttle off. When I let go of the brake, it's picking it back up. So it's smart to know what the, dra the brake is doing. It's smart enough to know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, it feels good though. Remember after this, guys, we're going directly into the dirt trails. So far, no issues except for a little bit of a shifting glitch. So I haven't been pedaling for like a half a mile now. I'm just full throttle still. Still using all this, pow this uh, the power of this motor. And I want to see if it matters if I'm adjusting the PAS assist. Nope. The throttle doesn't care what your pedal assist is at. Let's see if it's even at zero. Yeah. If your pedal assist is even at zero, that's actually pretty cool. Some bikes don't work like that. So if your pedal assist is even at zero and you try the throttle, if you have the throttle on with this button, let's turn it off in mid throttle. Yeah, just completely turn it off. Turn it back on mid throttle and it works again. Seems to be working fine. Still not pedaling, just cruising. I really like that ability to just cruise. If you're tired of pedaling or I don't, who knows what, you can just use it like a motorcycle. I love that. Let's see, pedal assist one. Let's get back up the driveway here. Can you do it? Mavic 3, Mini 3. Yeah, so I'm in I'm in speed one, pedal assist one, and this is really cruiser. Look at this. I'm just cruising, just relaxed and still gaining motion and moving my legs if I want to. Can the mini follow close up? I might want to even bring it in closer. Let's just come in super close. That's as close as it wants to go. I'll just keep it kind of low. And where's my throttle? Tat it off. Okay, there we go. So that's what the throttle's great for. Uh, see, it already lost me. Like right when you go behind a tree, it just doesn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, this, this might just be too frustrating than what it's worth, you know? This drone has pretty good obstacle avoidance. You know what I mean? So you can really like thread the needle through trees. You see that? Kind of neat, huh? Okay, this is gonna be my final try. All right, final try. <laughs> wow, it's trying, it's kind of going up and over this tree and trying to maintain its tracking. But yeah, 
So note to self, can't do trail tracking. It's just, it just loses you immediately. Great drone, look at that camera is fantastic, but uh, it's just not a tracking drone in tight, in tight wood scenario. All right, let's retire the drone from our off-road trail. Get back on the bike and let's do a little bit more of abusive trail riding with this thing. See if anything breaks and if it can handle the situation. Let's go. So we're going to start out at slowest speed, guys. And here we go. Into the trail we go, right? I'm expecting it to do pretty good. Let's go to speed two. I'm in speed one right now. There we go. Speed two is pretty awesome for this trail. I should have the dampening whoa, pretty much maxed out before it locks. So we'll see how this feels. And what I like to do is get a feel for the shocks, you know, and see like through a trail like this. Whoa, whoa that was a big ass branch. Situation like this, let's see how just using the throttle could possibly get us over this branch. Let's see, throttle only. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was a big one too. All right, let's continue on. Remember, if you just want to use a throttle, you can. That's up to you. Whew. Those tires are gripping this trail pretty good. I want to kind of bang on the shocks a bit. Um, when I did the, the Hemaway bike, that white one, it's on my channel too, guys, if you want to check that out. It's a pretty good one, you know? Budget-ish kind of bike. Same kind of setup as this. Um, when I got back from this trail ride on my just my first ride, whew, I hadn't realized it, but my shocks were leaking all over my garage. And it seemed like all the oil pretty much leaked out of those. So usually on less expensive bikes like this, they, they kind of uh, sacrifice some budget in the shocks. So I'm anxious to see how this one does. So far so good though. Odometer says we went five miles so far. I love how you can just, just use the throttle to get started. That really helps. Clicking up the power notch, I'm in power three now. Whoa. Started off in one. Here's a little suspension test. This is quite the little notch right here. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa, it's like two. That was, that was a good use case for throttle. Too narrow to pedal. So I just leveled out my feet and I'm just using the throttle right now. Let's see if it can get us up here. Whoa, kind of a ledge. Ooh, that was pretty kick-ass. So I'm kind of like at a trail split right now. And I'm gonna go up the trail, putting these shocks to the test, guys. I'm gonna lessen the um, dampening harshness a little bit. There we go. I'll have that on cam. You see how far they can go down? That's the maximum travel. I'll put that up on the camera. Shocks feel a little bit better now. I'm gonna go across this road. We're gonna continue on Ooh, up this trail. Now this, this part of the trail gets really rocky. I'm going uphill. And I want you guys to see all these rocks. Holy crap. Yeah, we're making that suspension work, that's for sure. Really don't want to biff it. Oh, yeah, it's great having the throttle. Throttle only, I'm just using the throttle. And getting through these rocks. Holy smokes. Oh, you see that? You see those rock ledges up there, guys? Now that ain't easy. I'm gonna put throttle assist five on here and go for it. Ooh, <laughs> just hit that little notch. 
But man, that throttle only really can get you out of some gnarly little dead stop zones. Oh. <laughs> Hitting every rock on the trail. Okay, yeah, this ain't, this ain't super easy stuff. I'm kind of here in the pedal, scrape the rocks a bit so that Jeez, oh, ooh, did you hear that? Keep it going, keep it going. Oh. Man, we are just crushing it here. I'm gonna be turning around pretty soon, guys. I think this is a pretty good test. This is farther than I've gone in any of my bike reviews. Oh, nailed that rock on the pedal. That's a freaking climb. I think I want to do this last climb here. Let's go. Don't give up. Don't give up now. If you need help with that motor, you just kind of freaking hold the motor full blast. Just go for it. Oh crap. Oh, that's steep. Okay, that section is over. That's gonna be a, a bitch getting back. At least it's downhill, right? Need a rest? Get off the pedals? and just use the throttle. Okay. I think I'm gonna turn around here, guys. Woo! That was hardcore. I think for going downhill, I'm gonna have to tighten this one click. Otherwise, it's like really gonna bottom the shocks. Yeah, that should be good. Yeah, you see how low the tires were? I can push my thumb in like an inch and it just sailed over those rocks, most of them. Let's see, the front is about the same. So that's actually a really good trail riding pre uh, pressure. As long as you don't like get a pinch flat, you know, hitting some of those rocks. Let's get home down the mountain and see if this thing holds together and we'll do a pros and cons. Not super optimal time of day. It's actually the evening and that sun is kind of right in my eyes again. Man, I hope my go-to cam is on. Getting all this cool footage. Ooh. I'm like working up a sweat, just going downhill by holding on. Jeez Louise. At the homestead, woo. Woo. We got seven miles, so we want a total of seven. Um, I think it was around four to five when we started. So we did like around a three mile, three, three-ish mile total off-road um, trail trip. And check it out. It's completely full still showing on the power meter. Not even one bar missing. So essentially, if we went seven miles of pretty hardcore stuff, um, and we don't even have a bar gone. I think this thing is going to uh, last you a long time. So if you guys were, were wanting long treks, it looks like this might be a contender. Let's just do a little damage assessment. I was hitting these pedals really hard. I almost thought I was gonna bend the pedal shaft, but they're really beefy. So no bending there, everything's still turning smoothie, but you can see where I was hitting the bottom of rocks right here. Everything stayed on, just that little con right here. Remember that was bent out of the box, had to pull all that stuff out. Seems to be a little wonky on first and seventh gear. It just doesn't really wanna click into those correctly, but again, that can be adjusted 
with just a little bit of fine tuning on the adjustments down here. Looks like the guard is kind of doing its job. Look right here, it's got some uh, gouging in the aluminum chain guard. That goes to show how high the rocks were I was going over. See that? It's like about a foot. So I was hitting some foot high rocks, scraping this one mostly because I usually keep my right foot down. And so, yeah, I actually busted off the reflectors on the pedals. So those are gone, no big deal. I mean, I was asking for it going through all those rocks. But I do like how the pedals do have grips on them. So it was keeping my shoes firmly planted. Let's have a look-see at the shocks. It looks like maybe a little bit of a dirt accumulation, but I'm not really seeing any oil leakage. There's no oil on the bottom of the shocks at all. This is just some residue from the oil and the dirt collecting on it at the top. So that's good to know because, boy, that Himaway bike just completely <sighs> leaked all the oil out. And it, all the oil came out the bottom too. I'm feeling no residue, so maybe some better shocks on this one. And tires are still perfectly fine. They really did hold up. I mean, it really did act like a tank down there, you know, in the rocks. I want to flip this thing over real quick and wheelie it and just look at the bottom. So, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this could be a weak point. Look where all the wires kind of come out of the frame where it says made in China. Uh, they're all a little bit exposed to rocks right below the chain. So hopefully, and that's probably what happened is this chain guard hit a rock first and the bike bounced off of it. But well, it looks like a sharp rock could just hit your wires right here and bust them up. Maybe it would be cool if they could put some protection right here on the bottom. So I'm just feeling like the brake edge. No, no dings on the brake from any of those rocks. Good little test on the um, drone too, the Mini 3 Pro. We kind of saw what it was capable of and what it couldn't do and all that stuff. So all you drone fans, or if you're looking for a drone to kind of track you, it really seems like uh, DJI could really do well with a, a drone like Skydio where you have a GPS beacon in your hand and you can do some more sports tracking and 360 avoidance. I mean, they do have the Mavic 3, which I have, and I'll probably be using that too in some of these uh, tests I do on bikes because that one has 360 obstacle avoidance. So all in all, guys, I can't really say a whole lot about this that's bad, aside from those couple of things. Um, I'm gonna put a little clip at the end I'm gonna do a little night ride and just a quick little one and you can kind of see from my point of view how that light's working on the road down here. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget all the stuff I review and my filming equipment is always down below in the description underneath the video. So go ahead and check it out. You can check out the link. I think AdMotor also gave me a discount code. So if you didn't wanna buy this bike and you liked it, go ahead and use my code through the link I have down below the video and you could save a few hundred bucks. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Just about to test the headlight, but check this out. If you press the up and down arrows at the same time, hold them there, it brings you into like an advanced menu. So you can set the tire size here. It's defaulting at 28. You hit the M button. And this is the top speed. So it was actually defaulted like at 28 I believe or 30 I just bumped it up to 40 max so that should give us a higher top speed that we can use with uh, the actual throttle and also our power assist and then we hit it again and then we can also do our screen bright brightness which one two three and then just to get out of the menu to save everything just hold down menu or power again and that gets you right back there so we're testing out the light. We want to go uh, menu plus the up arrow. There we go. Light turns on and the display is going to be lit as well. So let's see. This light doesn't look like it's going to be that great, but let's give it a try. Yeah, pretty narrow. Pick 
it up a little bit. Out there. Yeah, so not the best light. So it seems like we gained about three or four more miles per hour by upping the speed. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Whoa. <laughs>